I'm Sam Hockley, uh, the self-shooting director for Harry Skeggs' latest documentary project. I was privileged enough to join him uh, on his latest expedition down to South Georgia and Antarctica. Thumbs up. <laughs> Going well so far. <laughs> Dare to Hope is a story which at the centre has Harry Skeggs, fine art wildlife photographer, but in, in a grander scheme of things, it's about climate change, it's about Antarctica and South Georgia. What I wanted to achieve through this film really was to get a glimpse behind the lens and to get to know Harry as a person as well as his work. It's just me out in the field with Harry, so I need a camera that can keep up with that. A director's job, most of all, is to choose frames in which will build a narrative and to build an edit basically, creating a narrative on the fly that would make sense to an audience. So going from a wide shot to a close shot, over the shoulder to a detail, all these things needed to happen within the space of minutes. It could cope with any situation that I could throw at it, but it's small enough to be discreet when I'm shooting Harry. In documentary filmmaking it's very important that your subjects are at ease and building that relationship with Harry and making him comfortable in front of the camera was very important to the story and to the documentary as a whole. My experience of the region was incredible. South Georgia in particular is such a beacon of hope for the future of our planet. Harry is a vessel for us to, to carry that narrative because he's such a wildlife lover and an enthusiast. It was as much about capturing Harry's story as it was about capturing Antarctica and South Georgia as a whole. From the moment we left Ushuaia in Argentina, we were heading into the unknown. We weren't sure what we were going to expect. Our first steps onto Antarctica, South Georgia, it was, it was entering an alien planet, really. You know, one of the wildest places on Earth. So we were, we were hit with terrible weather, bad light, it was always a challenge for us to keep up with all of those factors. Some of the landings I just chose to take the camera and that was it. I had a shoulder rig with me and a tripod, but often I just opt for the camera body on its own. I used the quick menu quite a lot during my time in Antarctica. It meant I could easily switch between the 4K 120p and the 8K 10-bit colour. I've shot with cameras before that couldn't handle 4K, whereas I'm out there in these harsh environments and it's taking 8K 10-bit like it's nothing. When it can handle it that brilliantly, it just gives me the confidence to just keep shooting and keep shooting, which gives me more reach in the edit, which is always a good thing. <laughs> there are a lot of really challenging light situations on this project, a lot of low light situations, and a lot of situations where I just can't control the light. I don't think I had a situation where I could control the light. Um, so that was a real challenge for both me and the camera to deal with. We had the low light of London, the dying light of Antarctica, South Georgia, the bright sun, as well as the fog in Jason Harbour. All these places were really difficult to shoot with. The Z9 just handled it with absolute ease. Something I was really surprised about with the Z9 was the 24-bit sound recording. As a director, I'm visual first, but knowing that I had the safety of the 24-bit sound with the audio, means that the sound won't peak so much. It enables greater headroom margins uh, without noise penalties, so if there was too, something too loud or something too quiet, it means that I'm able to edit that in post-production to make it sound as it should and as it did out there. The Z9 really gave me the confidence to see through my vision of this film. I truly believe it's one of the best options out there for videographers, filmmakers or self-shooters like myself.